We are so glad to have everybody with us. Um, we're going to give people just a moment to get into the room, um, but um, I, there's a couple of um, housekeeping details that I'd like to get started with. Um, so first off, I'd like to just say hello. Um, my name is Greg Gunn. Uh, I am the training specialist. Uh, and so one of my roles is kind of organizing this. Um, this training is going to be almost exclusively done for you by your RPMs. Uh, they are the wizards and the teachers and the work behind uh, everything that you're going to enjoy. Uh, it's my role just to help put the pieces together. Um, so I'm so glad to be here with you today. Um, so the first little bit of housekeeping news is that we would really like you, if it's possible, bandwidth and so on, um, to be uh, present and be on camera. Um, and uh, if you have something to share, um, don't hesitate to come off uh, of mute. Uh, we do appreciate everybody being on mute while we're going through the trainings, but if you have something to share, um, feel free to participate and just unmute yourself and come on. Uh, if for whatever reason you don't have a headset, you don't have a microphone, um, then please rely on the chat box uh, as your method to communicate with the group. Um, and I can see that uh, Andrea has already put a welcome in the chat box. Uh, we are so glad that you all are here. Um, the next little piece of housekeeping um, is that our Zoom accounts kind of have uh, account names usually associated with them. And so a lot of you uh, have Zoom names that are your names, um, but several of you do not. So if you could, um, let me guide you through that right now. If you could change your name, there's two ways to do it. If you're on the gallery screen and you go to your little box, uh, find yourself on the screen, you should be kind of probably somewhere up in the top left. Um, if you mouse over your screen and you wiggle your mouse, you'll see a little three dot, dot, dots. And if you click on that, it will allow you, it's about the third one down, it'll allow you to rename yourself. So for instance, if I rename myself, I can put Greg Gunn and I can add TS for training specialist to the end of my name. Uh, what we'd like you to do is just make sure that your name in uh, the Zoom, uh, that your Zoom name, sorry, couldn't find my words there, um, that your Zoom name just reflects your actual name. And then if you could, um, at the end of your name, please put the type of center that you serve in. So if you're in an FRC or a YSC or an FRYSC, uh, or you're one of uh, the folks that are joining us uh, with a different role, like a district contact. Um, and so, uh, and for RPMs, uh, if you could add uh, RPM and your region, um, so that uh, coordinators from other regions will get to know who you all are. Um, so there we go. And so I see Lisa has already done that. Uh, and Lisa, if you could change that just to RPM5, because otherwise it just goes off the screen and we can't see. We just see region. <laughs> so, all right. Um, and I, I see we have- too long. I Pardon? can't even see mine. I said, Greg, I think my name's too long. I can't I, even see mine. I think it is. You, you could just put 3B. <laughs> that <laughs> might fit. Way too long. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, Naila. Uh, I, I don't see you, but I heard you. Um, absolutely. Well, welcome, everyone. Um, like I said, we are really, really glad that you are here. Um, and so we're going to get started. Um, and so once we get that those housekeeping things uh, out of the way. I've got a couple more um, just bits and pieces. Um, one is the manuals. So we have been sending manuals since last week. Um, we have some people who've registered recently um, when we had some address changes and we had some printing delays. Um, so hopefully everybody is in possession of a brand spanking new hard copy of your NCO manual. Um, they are a thing of beauty and they will have a lot of the presentations and the PowerPoints in them. So I uh, highly recommend that you have this out and have it with you uh, and follow along because this is going to be your notebook uh, moving forward. So it'll have all of the information that was conveyed plus all of your notes and exercises and so on. If for some reason, this magical document hasn't made it into your hands yet. Uh, mine just arrived yesterday. We do have in that email that I mailed out Monday, there is that link to the PDF. And so you can use that in the meantime. Uh, and hopefully yours will arrive later today in the mail. Along those lines, uh, one other 
outside detail is the Google Classroom. Uh, most of you have gone in and done the pre-work in the Google Classroom. There are about five or six of you um, that, uh, and, and I think one person that just recently registered um, that still need to get that caught up. So I'll be following up with you um, just as long as you get that done. Um, that will be fine. Um, there are some sessions that you're going to want to do um, sooner rather than later. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to do that, we'll talk uh, after, uh, after class today. Um, and then last but not least, while I'm still sharing screen, let me get the schedule up. So here is our schedule for today. Uh, we're starting with just an introductions and in just a minute, um, we're going to have an opportunity for everybody to introduce themselves. And then we're going to go right into a session with our director, Melissa Goins, um, really just talking about Frisk and our history, um, who we are, how we got here, where we're going. Uh, and she's going to do a little bit of vision casting um, there. We'll have a quick break. Um, and then you can see the sessions going through the day. Um, now, if we finish a session just a few minutes early, we'll give you little breaks between two. So um, hopefully we'll give you chances to, to fill coffee um, and so on. Okay, so I think that that is all of the housekeeping boring uh, details. Um, and so uh, before we get started with introductions, um, one of the things that we have been talking a lot about and, and what we'd really like to come out of this training is that you all, um, all the coordinators here with us for new coordinator orientation, you're all kind of in the same boat, right? Most of you probably got hired um, while the pandemic's been going on. There are probably people here that have not laid eyes on a student yet, uh, at least not in a, in a school building. So you have a lot in common and we would really like for you all to become a class, kind of like your, your high school class that you graduated with or your class coming through college um, where you get together with those folks and you probably still count friends from those classes. We would like your NCO class to be like that. Um, and so um, we're starting with NCO with this orientation um, here in March you all will be invited to come back in the fall for returning coordinator orientation, where we will build on what we're doing here and then also train you up on the standards um, of quality in, in family delivery. But then there's other opportunities where we'd like to bring this class together. Um, so um, as you participate, um, in big group activities like we're about to do and also small breakout activities, um, please make an effort to try to get to know one another um, and share your experiences and support each other. So with that said, what we'd like to do is we'd like to do introductions and the best way that I can think of to organize this uh, is alphabetically. So if you could pull up your participant list, um, it should put, now that we've all renamed ourselves with actual names, uh, we should be over there on the right side of the screen um, with all of our names. And, uh, and I'll just call out um, if you can't see that or if you're not sure. Um, if you can't participate um, voice-wise, if you just throw something in the chat and when we get to you, we'll just read that piece. Um, and so we'll get started. So here are the things that you're going to share in your introduction, please. Uh, if you could share your name, um, share how long you've actually been a coordinator. Did you just get hired eight days ago? Or have you actually been in the job eight months and you just couldn't make it to NCO last time around? Um, uh, where do you serve? And that could be your school, your center, uh, your county is probably how a lot of people uh, will best be able to kind of figure out where in the state you are. And then uh, the key question I'd love everybody to answer is what's the most exciting thing that's happened to you in your role as a Frisk or as an RPM or a district contractor, whatever your uh, role is. So your name, how long have you been uh, serving? Where do you serve? And what's the most exciting that's, things that's happened to you while you've been serving? And so I'm gonna go ahead. We'll start with myself and Melissa because we're at the very top of the list because we're the hosts. Um, and so, Again, my name is Greg Gunn. I am the training specialist uh, here at Frisk. I have been here since May. So my entire tenure uh, at Frisk has been um, 
in the virtual world. And the most exciting thing that happened to me as a Frisk was my very first day on the job. As I was getting my laptop, uh, we found out that we were going to have VOV virtually. And so um, day one, it was, hey, figure out uh, how to have a virtual conference. And uh, hopefully, um, uh, hopefully some of you got to enjoy that. Uh, and so with that, I will hand things over to Melissa Newton. Hi, everybody. I'm Melissa Newton. Um, I'm the training manager, um, and the, I've been in this position now for almost three years. And I think the most exciting thing that's happened is um, at my first VOV a couple of years ago when we had the uh, Bikers Against Child Abuse at the conference, and we were able to get their Harleys into the classroom. Um, that was pretty fun uh, being able to do that. Uh, so that's the most exciting thing. Um, and if you guys got um, any messages from McNewton, um, that's me. <laughs> we have two Melissa's in the in the Frisk office. And so sometimes it's easier just to call me McNewton so we can uh, keep the Melissa's uh, separated in our minds. So uh, glad to have you guys here. And do I need to go to the next person? I or... think we got Abby Hewitt up next. Okay, awesome. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, sometimes my microphone doesn't work. Um, so I'm Abby Hewitt. I have been a at FRC since October, so not too long. Um, I am with Covington Independent Schools, which is in Kenton County. Um, I don't have anything too exciting. I went through... Um, Thanksgiving and Christmas, so that was a lot to deal with, just starting in in the pandemic. Um, that's about it. Thank you, Abby. Uh, next up, we got Abby Hall. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Well, my name is Abby Hall, and I'm very new. I just started in February, so I haven't even been doing this a month. And um, I'm in Pulaski County at the Somerset Independent School District. Um, I'm at Mace Middle School, and then I'm at Hawkins Elementary, too. And the most exciting thing for me, I think, is just being, being able to meet all these new students. And we've had snow days, we've had ice days, so they haven't even been in the building every day that I've been here. So that's been fun for me, just getting to meet a whole new group of kids. Super, thank you. Uh, Alicia Lewis. Uh, my name is Alicia Lewis, and I've been in Frisk since September of last year. And I work at Page School Center in the Bell County School District. And the most exciting thing probably that's happened to me is I got to come in and remodel and get new furniture and. Sounds great. All right, well, thank you. Um, we'll switch over to uh, Andrea, one of our RPMs. Good morning, I'm Andrea Pikoff, and I was a coordinator for 26 years before I became an RPM for fabulous Region 3B. I've got four people here with me today, so that excites me. And I just looked around and I thought the most exciting thing in 2007, I was the Harry J. Coward Center of the Year for my FRC. So all of you new folks, strive for that. You want somebody to walk up behind you and pat you on the back and say you're doing a good job. That felt like that that day. So I know you're all doing a good job and I'm glad you're here. That's awesome. Um, I think next up we have Angela Thomas. And let me just say, um, if people get booted or we have people come in, uh, we might miss some people going through the alphabet. So if we do miss you, my apologies, uh, just be ready to chime in when we get to the end of the list. Um, but with that said, um, who did I just say? Okay, I guess it's Annie Wielden. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yep. Um, okay, my name is Annie, and um, I am the Family Resource Coordinator at Burnside Elementary in Pulaski. Um, I started in December, and so I've been here for about three months. Um, I guess just the most exciting thing for me is just meeting everybody and just getting acclimated to this job and what, you know, my role is and things like that, so... Super. Well, welcome, Annie. Um, and next up, we have another one of our RPMs, Barbara. Hey, everybody. I'm Barbara Pettis. I'm the Regional Program Manager in Region 6. Um, I've been an RPM for four years now, and uh, prior to that, I was a coordinator for 17 years in Washington County. 
And um, just thinking about my RPM role, the most exciting thing for me is when I get to meet new coordinators and just sharing their excitement um, for their, you know, for their new position. Um, and that's just, just great. I love, I love meeting new coordinators. So welcome everybody. Thank you, Barbara. And then we'll go to another one of our RPMs, Betty. Sorry. Good morning. Um, my name is Betty Pennington. Um, I was a coordinator for 12 years, and then I started my sixth year on March 1st being an RPM. Um, I, like Andrea, um, was a Harry J. Coward Award winner in 2005. So um, that's probably the most exciting thing that's happened during my tenure as a coordinator. Working with new coordinators, like Barbara said, is something that I really love doing. I, I love the training part of my job and I love uh, working with new people. I wanna give a shout out to Abby Hewitt. She's my only coordinator here during the NCO this time. I had nine last time. So looking forward to working with Abby. And I'm in region four. If, in case I didn't tell you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Betty. Um, and I think next up we have Brenda, Brenda Givens. Sorry, I had to <laughs> come off mute, but um, so I'm in region two. I've been here since uh, the beginning of February. So I've not been here very long. And I think one of the most exciting things that's happened is that we have reopened school. So right now we're trying to see how, how, to, how to deal with this. And it's been kind of interesting how, how things have changed from having hybrid schedule to now a full schedule. So we'll see how that goes. It's a little bit exciting. So we'll see how that goes. All right, welcome, Brenda. Are, are you by any chance uh, from Glasgow? I think I recognize that room you're in. <laughs> Uh, in any case, we'll go on to uh, Brendan Bird. Brendan? Hello, um, my name is Brendan Bird. Um, I started in October, so I'm a little, I'm in a little over six months. Um, I'm at Central Hardin High School in Hardin County Schools. Um, I think the most exciting thing that has happened to me so far, there's been lots in transitioning in the middle of the pandemic. It's been very interesting. Um, but just like learning and creating new ways to reach our kiddos, um, like Google Classrooms and videos and like platforms that they use on a daily basis has been really fun, especially to reach our online learning academy kids. Um, remodeling the center has been a blast. Um, and especially having students come in and say like, oh, this is really welcoming. Like, I really like this space. And that's exactly what we want because this is their space as much as it is mine, if not more. Um, and then we just announced, Hardin County Schools just announced that uh, we're going back five days a week in like three or four weeks. So I'm looking forward to that. Super. Thank you, Brendan. Um, hey, next Brandon. up, I think we have Cheryl. Oh, go, sorry, go ahead. Did we miss Angela Thomas? We very likely did. Angela, did. my apologies. <laughs> That's okay. Can you hear me? I can. Go ahead. Okay, hi, my name is Angela Thomas and I have been the uh, director for uh, Millbrook Elementary School out of Christian County since December the 1st. Uh, but prior to that, I was a um, clerk since 1996 up until 2017 for Monica Andrews. And my most exciting thing um, is just putting a smile on the child's face when you're able to supply their needs and um, they're just giving me a joy just to see them being happy, just to give them a pencil, you know, they just, it just makes their day. So that's been really exciting to me, just getting back into the swing of things, being back into the Family Resource Center. And I love the position and I'm just so appreciative of the position. So that's very, been so exciting to me, just being here for the kids. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. And thank you. And I apologize uh, for missing you. And uh, oh, okay. thank, thank you, Sherry. <laughs> Sherry is my eagle eye. She catches everything that I miss. And I so appreciate that. Um, thank you very much. Um, okay, I think that brings us down to Cheryl, Cheryl Ward. And I'm looking for Cheryl. 
Okay, Cheryl, we'll come back to you. It looks like you're having trouble getting off of mute. Um, so the next person I have, oh, it looks like she might have dropped. Um, and so that brings us to Sierra Bowman. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Sierra Bowman. I work at Henry Clay High School in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, so I believe that's Region 10. And I started December 7th. So it was a kind of weird time, I guess, because you have winter break and no students were in school. Um, I would say the most exciting thing for me has been a couple of things. I actually went to Henry Clay High School, so it was nice to see that some of the teachers are still there. And my counselor, who I work really closely with, was actually my counselor in high school. So I think it's really nice. Um, also, just being able, I like the fact that I was able to help students, but it was also a nice time for me to kind of figure out and take my time because usually it seems like you're kind of like when school was in, you wouldn't be able to read your manual actually until five months later or just kind of hit it as it comes, but you were able to actually read through stuff, call people, ask for a lot of help and um, being able to help students even through a virtual time. So even though they weren't in person, I would try to do like the um, home visits and just also being able to redecorate my office, even though it's still not done. But being able to um, upgrade that sum was really nice. Well, thank you um, and welcome. Um, and very quickly, um, just uh, uh, we've had a couple of people join in. Um, so just real quickly, we're going through introductions. And so if you could just name uh, just your name, uh, how long you've been here, uh, where you serve, and what's the most exciting thing that's happened to you as a Frisk. Um, and Cheryl, um, I see you're back on screen. Uh, you want to try again? <laughs> uh, you're still muted, though. So down at the bottom of your screen, you're going to want to unmute yourself. There you go. Oh, I still can't hear you though. So you are in fact unmuted, but we're not hearing you. Well, we're, while we get up, so go ahead and put what you were gonna say in the chat box and we'll read it. And in the meantime, uh, let me skip down to Danita Pauly. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, my name is Danita Pauly and um, I started in November of 2020, so coming in right at Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays. Um, I work at Belfry High School in Pike County, Kentucky, and probably the most exciting thing has been uh, just having the kids back in the building. We are on a hybrid split schedule, so we come Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, um, and uh, it's just been pleasant having the kids back. Um, again, we have been kind of uh, in and out with, with the virtual uh, due to the bad weather that we had a couple of weeks ago. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward to having some kids in the building. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. And I think that brings us down to Debbie, Debbie Flower. Yes, Flahar. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Debbie Flahar. Um, I'm days new. Um, I'm interim coordinator until the first of June, and um, probably um, Pritchard Family Resource Center, Carter County, Kentucky, Region Seven. And probably the most exciting thing is that children, in my 10 days, actually, is that we have students in the classroom five days a week starting this Monday. Well, congratulations mm -hmm. um, and welcome. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, next up, I think we have uh, Detra Stafford. Hi, Greg. It's Detra. Nobody ever says it right. So I'm sorry, Detra. It's okay. Uh, my name is Detra Stafford. I am, well, I've been a coordinator. Yesterday marks four months uh, before I was a coordinator uh, in the FRC. I was in a kindergarten classroom, so this has been a big jump for me. Um, I went from one elementary school on the north end of town to the south end of town, or the south end of the county. But um, I'm in Hopkins County, Region 1, 
And I guess so far, one of the most exciting things for me has been when we switched from hybrid to four days a week, I've gotten to see like students that went to the school that I was at before who were in the classroom that I was in. And I've gotten to meet so many new students just from them actually being physically in the building. Well, super. Well, thank you, Deidre. And by the way, whatever you just did, uh, your sound went from we had trouble hearing you to we could hear you perfectly. So thank you for that. Um, and next up, I believe we have Dustin Lopez. Can you hear me, Mr. Gunn? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Dustin Lopez. Good morning, everybody. Um, I actually have been in this position since February, uh, beginning of February. Uh, here in uh, Hopkinsville uh, Middle School in Christian County, Kentucky. Um, basically, I, I was in the classroom before this. I taught Spanish and uh, wanted to do something a little bit different to, to be able to, to impact kids in a different way. Um, and, and so basically the most exciting thing that I've been is just tra transitioning from dealing with high school kids my whole career to now dealing with middle school kids and just building that relationship and and seeing the growth with, with our young people in that area. So uh, I'm very excited and I've gotten a lot of help from Mr. William Owen too, by the way. So I want to shout him out because he's done a great job with me. So I appreciate it and, and I'm anxious to learn some good things today. That's great, Dustin. I actually taught middle school for over 18 years. So I would agree that that's probably the most exciting thing that's happened to you. <laughs> um, so welcome aboard. Um, uh, next up, Eric Adams. Can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, my name is Eric Adams. I'm about 10 days new into this. Um, I'm an FRC in Bullock County. Uh, the most exciting thing that's recently happened is just probably hitting the ground running, being a new coordinator and getting to enjoy, you know, meeting new people. I also um, come out of the classroom in middle school, but I was an ISAP instructor. So it's uh, nice to be the good guy, the face of the good guys instead of the, the bad. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Good to have you with us, Eric. Uh, Greta, Greta Gibson. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Greta Gibson, and I am in Region 8 at Emelina Elementary, and I'm a Frisk. I've been here since November the 4th, and the most exciting thing is I was able to help play Santa Claus through Christmas. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, welcome, uh, Haley. All right, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I don't see me, so I don't know. Um, but my name's Haley Anderson. I am at the Adair County High School Youth Service Center. I've been here since January 4th, and I guess the most exciting thing that's happened so far for me is just planning ideas for student activities for the summer and we just discovered that we we're going to be able to have a prom so being able to help with that and of course create a classroom and all that kind of stuff so that's been the most exciting that's super um and Haley, just real quickly um when you are sharing in the future like when you're in breakout groups and things like that you probably actually want to do the opposite and go off of video um so we can hear you a little better you broke up just a little bit uh, and that's really true for everyone just to know uh, if you're having any trouble breaking up or communicating um it, we'd really like to have you on camera while we're um doing the sessions but sometimes if you're sharing uh if you if you cancel your camera while you're talking, um, your bandwidth is a little bit more preserved and we can hear you a little bit better. Um, but that's great. Thanks and welcome, Haley. Uh, and finally, uh, not finally, um, but moving down, uh, Jamie Stevens. Hi, I am Jamie Stevens. I started January 4th, so I've been here about two months. Um, I'm in Hancock County. I work at South Hancock Elementary. I'm an FRC. Um, probably the most exciting thing for me is we have an incarcerated parent and by the power of Zoom, we've been able to Zoom call with the parent and the child and just seeing the smile on that kid's face was amazing. That was very rewarding to me. So that's probably my big accomplishment in the past two months. That sounds great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Jed Andrews. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Um, Jen Andrews. I was hired November 5th. I'm in Jesmond County. I'm the youth service center over 
or coordinator over two high schools. I think the best thing that's happened is, so I have an assistant, uh, Sharon, and she's fantastic. And we have kind of hit the ground running and been able to revision what we want the youth service center to be for our high school students. That sounds great. And we're almost neighbors because I'm right up the street here in Jesmond County. Oh, nice. Yep. So, um, okay. And so let's see, uh, Jerry. Uh, my name is Jerry Ford. I'm from uh, Harlan County at Kaywood Elementary. Uh, I've been hired since October 26. Uh, the most exciting thing was probably having to figure out a way to deliver Mission of Hope to the children. We had to do a drive through and we gave them uh, Mission of Hope gifts and uh, food boxes. And we were also able through a grant through Berea to provide uh, most of them with uh, winter coats, winter clothing, shoes, things like that. And just seeing the, the look on the kids' faces. But uh, just kind of hit the ground running there in October like most a lot of you have. You know, you get thrown into the holiday season and it's just kind of, you know, it's kind of hectic. But I uh, love doing it and just uh, that's about it. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Um, and did, what type of center were, did you say? Are you a YSC, FRC? No, F F or Y C. Yeah, okay. All uh, right, super. Right. Welcome, Jerry. Um, Julie Prophet. Hi, I'm Julie Prophet. Um, I was hired January the sixth this year, so I've only been doing it about a couple of months. Um, I was hired at Summit in Canonsburg in Boyd County. Um, the most exciting thing, I guess, that ever happened to me, the very first day that I went in, I got a call um, where I had got a whole lot of food donated. So I was able to contact a bunch of families and pass those out to the kids there. Um, then we had a store go down here um, and no longer in business here, the children's place, and they donated us a ton of uh, clothing. So we got a lot of that. Um, and then I got a call from Arby's foundation and they donated a thousand dollars to our, our kids. So in the last two months, we've had a lot of donations. So those have been the exciting thing for me to be able to share those with the kids. That's great, Julie. Um, thank you. Okay. Kendra, you're actually on deck, but I'll uh, hold on a second. Uh, Cheryl Ward, uh, wasn't able to, uh, to chat with us. Um, so she did share in the chat if you weren't able to see it. Uh, she's from Elkhorn City Elementary in Pike County. She's been with Frisk since January 27th. Uh, she has worked in the school before since 2001. She's worn many different hats from aide to attendance clerk and she just moved from finance payroll clerk uh, to Frisk. Uh, in many roles, she's worked closely with coordinators. Um, so she's excited to help the children in a better way than she could before. So very much, uh, Thank you, Cheryl, and uh, welcome. And so now uh, on to Kendra. Good morning, um, I'm Kendra Mitchell. Um, my first day was September 28th. I'm in Lincoln County, Region 6 um, at Eustonville Elementary. Um, it's been very exciting for me because that was actually my elementary school. So it was really cool to go back to where I first started. I, um, prior to that, I was in community engagement coordinator for our district for 15 years. So this has been a little bit just ready to do something different. Um, recently, a very rewarding experience for me was we had a parent that had a pretty extensive criminal background, um, but he has changed and rehabilitated himself and was looking for a job, which is really hard to find a job when you have a bad background. So um, I was able to hook him up with a career coach, um, get his record expunged, and now he is working and providing for his family. So I was really excited to be able to do that and make a little bit of a difference. Well, super. Well, thank you. Uh, next up, um, I think it's Letisa. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, my name is Letisa Spradlin. Um, I'm an FRC in Franklin County at an elementary school at the Early Learning Village. So I just have pre-K and kindergartners here. Um, I just started March the 1st, so not even two full weeks in yet. Um, I have been here in this school, this is my second year, so I'm going from the classroom into um, the FRC position. So that's really exciting. Um, probably the most exciting thing is just kind of going from a classroom into an office is kind of cool. Um, but we all started five days a week here 
um, this past Monday. So that's been great to see everybody back in the building again. Super. All right. Uh, and next up, uh, another RPM, Lisa. Good morning, everyone. I'm excited to be here. My name is Lisa Gay. I am the Regional Program Manager for Region 10. And um, I was a coordinator for 14 years in two elementary schools prior to becoming an RPM for the past two years. So, uh, and probably the most exciting thing, I'm gonna target one thing from today, my brand new coordinator, Sierra Bowman, big shout out, whoop, whoop. She actually read her manual, yay. So that's gonna, that's what I'm gonna put as my exciting thing because, you know, we all know administrator guidebook is the Bible for Frisk. So I'm gonna plug that, there we go. Have a great day. Thanks so much, Lisa. Um, that brings us uh, to Michaela. Hello, my name is Michaela Belcher and I am an FRC in Bullitt County at Roby Island. And I started at the beginning of November and I would say probably the most, uh, the most excitement for me has been um, experiencing going from virtual learning to hybrid and now we're going to the four days a week all while learning um, learning the position um, and then building those relationships, which I've been thoroughly enjoying. That's great. Well, welcome, Michaela. Um, and uh, next we have our director, Melissa Goins. Good morning. So Melissa Goins, I've been here six and a half years. Um, and the most exciting thing I think that happened to me, there's been so every day is a roller coaster, but um, probably when um, we had a budget year and we were on target to get our budget cut as was everyone else, um, we weren't singled out. It was, this is, this is what we got to do. We got to take one for the team. Everybody's getting this percentage of budget cut. And not only did we not get cut, which we were thankful for that and just, shocked at that, but we got um, money to open additional centers for the first time in years and years and years. So it was um, exciting and shocking and wonderful and uh, nerve wracking and all the things. So it was a great opportunity for a teamwork creative solution. Great reversal of fortunes. All right. Uh, Molly Horton. Hi, I'm Molly Horton. I am an FRYSC in McCracken County. So I have Lone Oak Intermediate and Lone Oak Middle School. Um, I've been here since February, so a little over a month. Um, before that, I was substitute teaching in the schools. And so I'd say that's the most exciting thing is not knowing when I would see those kids and now getting to see them most, most of the time daily and just serve a different role in their life. So that's been exciting. That's great. Welcome, Molly. Um, Maya Duncan. Hello, my name is Maya Duncan. I am a Family Resource Center Coordinator at, um, in Jefferson County. I service two different school locations. Um, and I started in the month of November, actually the week before Thanksgiving. Um, I have been serving with the district altogether for about four years and I transitioned from working with adults to working with the kids. So I think that's probably one of the most exciting things for me is um, I'm no longer helping adults, but I'm able to see a benefit in the future of helping children. That's great, welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, Naila. Good morning, everyone. I'm Naila Imanyara Sirakali. I am the Regional Program Manager in Region 3A. And I have been a Regional Program Manager for 19 years. I've been with the Cabinet for about a total of 24, 25 years uh, altogether. My most exciting thing in being an RPM is doing monitoring because it afforded me an opportunity to see all of Kentucky. Whereas I live in Jefferson County, if I had another position, I probably never would have went further into Kentucky and all these different regions and areas. So I've been far eastern Kentucky, far western Kentucky. I've been south central Kentucky. I have been all over Kentucky and I have enjoyed it. I've enjoyed meeting with the coordinators and hearing about all the wonderful things that they have done for people. And so that's been probably the most rewarding thing in my career that I can say I have really been able to connect with all of Kentucky. 
So welcome everybody. I think I have about four or five coordinators here today. I share the region with my wonderful RPM friend, Andrea Pike Golf. She's three region 3B. So just welcome everybody. I hope you get a lot out of your training. If you have any questions, we're all here available to answer any questions for you. So welcome. Thank you, Naila. By the way, nice job with the name. Like, I love how you managed to fit that all in there. <laughs> um, next up, we got Nicole Lear. Hi, um, my name's Nicole Lear. Um, I've been here since the beginning of December. Um, I'm at Rock Castle County Middle School. We're small school or small county, so only middle school there. Um, I would say the most exciting thing is, of course, the kids coming back four days a week next week. So that's great and building those relationships. And my um, national director found us some more money. So we're going to have more money to spend. So that's good and trying to figure out how to do that. So yeah. that's great. And that's definitely exciting. Um, Paul Kuckendorfer. Hi, Greg. Hello, sir. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome everyone this morning. I'm Paul Kuckendorfer. I'm the Region 5 Regional Program Manager, uh, which is primarily in the bluegrass uh, section of the state. Uh, I've been with Family Resource Centers, uh, I guess this is my 27th year. I was a coordinator for 12 years in Northern Kentucky. It's also the Regional Program Manager down there for about nine years in the Northern Kentucky region. And I've been the Regional Program Manager here uh, in Region 5 for about the last six years. You know, the most exciting thing that uh, happens uh, to me as a regional program manager is when I'm able to get out into your centers and visit and see all the great programming you're doing with the, the students and families. And then the other thing um, is just as much as hopefully you will learn from us, us being staff, we learn just as much from uh, you all because you, you come from so many varied backgrounds with so much expertise in areas that we may not be, you know, particularly uh, proficient in. So, you know, I, I look at it as a, a very much two-way relationship. And uh, I certainly always look at it as, as we work together. We work with each other. No one works for me. I work with you. So anyway, thank you for having me today. And I look forward to uh, seeing you a little later uh, during the relationship uh, program presentation. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Paula Turner. Hi, I'm Paula Turner. I'm from Washington County and I'm the district coordinator. This is my second year and I'm just joining in to learn a little more. Um, I feel like the first year I was kind of here, you have Frisk. Um, great. I uh, didn't really know what to do with it. I'm also over, um, I'm the Assistant Director of Special Education. I'm the Director of Early Childhood. I'm over 21st Century Programs. So this year, I'm finally seeing how all my programs can work together um, and we can really, really make some great things happen with our use of funding and, and our programming. So I'm really excited to be here and hope I can just understand even more. That's great. We're glad to have you here. Uh, Rebecca Johnson. Hi, I'm Rebecca Johnson. I'm the FRC at Pleasant Grove Elementary in Mount Washington, Mountain Boy County. Um, I started in November. So it was kind of been trial by fire just a little bit. Um, the most exciting thing, I guess, would be we uh, have started a hybrid schedule. So we've been doing that for a bit and we're getting ready next week to go back to four days a week. So we're all excited about that. And it's, it's been fun so far. All right. Um, welcome, Rebecca. Um, uh, next up, I think we've got Ronnie Stoner. Good morning. My name is Ronnie Stoner. I've uh, been in this role since uh, the start of November. I'm at Newburgh Middle School in Jefferson County. Uh, since I started, I kind of hit the ground run, run, running uh, due to the holiday season. Uh, most exciting thing uh, since I've been in this role was uh, I fed a thousand families 
uh, during the Thanksgiving holiday, uh, fed 450 families um, during the Christmas holiday, and over 100 families received Christmas assistance. Uh, so my first two months, I hit the ground running and uh, got a lot accomplished with, with serving our, our families. So that was pretty exciting to do. Um, I also like to shout out my mentor. I, I can't uh, give enough thanks to uh, being in this role and being in this position and not having any training at all and just kind of, you know, here you go, here's the job, you're hired, uh, and you got to kind of figure things out as you go. Um, but my mentor has been an, an extreme help to me in learning this job and getting getting things done the, the correct way. Well, super. Thank you, Ronnie. Um, and uh, another RPM, I got Russell Jones, or I'm sorry, yes, Russell Jones. Welcome, Russell. Good morning. It's good to see everybody today. We're so excited uh, that you guys are here with us. Um, one of my, I'm a, the RPM in Region 9, which is uh, south, southern Kentucky, I guess, I guess would be the, the general location. And uh, again, we're just so excited to have you guys here. That's probably my favorite thing as a, an RPM is getting to see all of our new people. And I love NCO. It's one of my favorite, uh, favorite things that we do. You're not going to say anything about that belt draped over your shoulder? Well, I have five coordinators here, and just Region 9 is the best. <laughs> so that's just why we got the belt. So. I, I already see the regional rivalries uh, firing up here. Uh, thank you, Russell. Um, Sarah Krause. Good morning. My name is Sarah Krause. Um, I just started the beginning of January. I am the youth service coordinator for Collins High School that's in Shelby County, Kentucky. Um, the most exciting thing that so far for me is to really connect and help families. Um, since January, a lot has happened with our families from a house fire to parents losing their jobs. Um, so it's been really exciting to be able to be involved with that to help them. Well, super. Um, okay, well, welcome, Sarah. Um, Shani? Hey, Shanae. I'm sorry, Shanae. It's okay. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Shanae Lasseter. I am the Family Resource Coordinator at Crumbs Lane Elementary, which is in Jefferson County. Um, the most exciting thing really has just been learning this role and everything that um, comes with it. But I am looking forward to our students who are coming back next week. Thank you. Terrific. Um, welcome, Shanae. Um, and let's see, that brings us to Sherry Martin. Another one of our excellent RPMs. Good morning, everybody. I'm Sherry Bond Martin, and I'm the Regional Program Manager for Region 11. That is Central Kentucky. I work out of Elizabethtown, and I was a coordinator for 12 years, and I've been an RPM for 13 years. And the most exciting thing I would say that I've seen is the tremendous growth of the program not only in the number of centers, but in the support we have um, with our stakeholders, with our legislators, uh, the, the public relations that we've, um, the great public relations that we've gotten over the years has just grown. I mean, when you have a U.S. Senator from Kentucky mention the Family Resource and Youth Service Center program uh, on the Senate floor, and you have the governor of Kentucky mention you on television, I mean, that is, awesome and we are awesome so welcome everybody um i hope you i know you will love it i hope you do thank you sherry uh and let's see that brings us to shanzetta hi i'm shanzetta littleton i'm a frc at two elementary schools in jefferson county which is uh, region 3b and the most exciting thing that has happened to me is trying to figure out with, while we were virtual, how to interject myself with the students. And just yesterday, one of the first grade teachers invited me to their virtual pizza party. And it was so much fun watching these kids 
eat this pizza and laugh and just getting to know one of the, you know, classrooms. And I didn't even know the teacher at all. And she invited me. So this, that was the most exciting thing so far was, um, and the welcoming that I've been getting from my uh, schools uh, and the environment here is great. That's great. Well, welcome Shinzetta um, and Susie Pritchard. Hey there, uh, I'm Susie Pritchard and I am in region nine with Russell Jones. I just started in November. I am um, family uh, resource coordinator at Central Elementary. And I guess um, some of the most exciting things for me um, was getting thrown into Angel Tree. Um, and we uh, were fortunate enough to uh, service over 160 kids and families uh, for Angel Tree this year. And um, I work with Gina Sears uh, here in Knox County. And um, we have uh, been so blessed the past few months with food donations, clothing donations. Uh, we received um, coats also from um, the um, Children's Place uh, clothing. So we've been so blessed in Region 9 and I am excited uh, for the training and this new opportunity. Well, great. We're glad to have you here. Um, all right, we're almost there. Um, let's see, um, Teresa Combs. There you go. I'm Teresa Combs. I'm the regional program manager for Region 8. That is southeastern Kentucky. And I'm glad to join you all this today. Um, I'll be doing some of the sessions in the afternoon, so I'll um, hopefully won't bore you to death. I'm sure you won't. Uh, Tanya Kuckendorfer. Good morning, Tanya Cookendorfer, and I am the data manager for the division of Frisk, and I have been with Frisk almost my entire adult life. I started in July of 1992, so in July I will be here 29 years, and obviously I, there are too many moments to count, so all of them have been wonderful. I love my job. And this is truly the best program that I could have ever wanted to devote my life to. That's awesome. I agree, by the way. Um, and let's see, that brings us to Tanya Snyder. Hello, I'm Tanya Snyder. I'm out of Richmond, Kentucky. I'm at Madison Central High School um, and as the coordinator here at the high school. Um, I just started in January and I'm super excited about greeting all of our students now here at Madison Central. We have a hybrid, um, we're coming hybrid and then March 22nd, all of our option one students will be returning and that's approximately 1100 students here on site. That will definitely be exciting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, uh, Wendy. Uh, don't have a last name, but FRC. My name is Wendy Hacker. I'm the FRC at Garther Elementary in Knox County, Region 9, and I got hired in November. And I think one of the most exciting things for me is we came back five days a week this week. So having the kids in the building, being able to interact with them is awesome. Well, super. Um, okay, and we've got uh, one more RPM. Um, Mr. Will Owen, uh, he gets the best dressed award for the day, by the way. <laughs> Go ahead, Will. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, again, like uh, Greg said, I'm William Owen, a regional program manager for Region 1. And uh, I'm, I'm horrible directionally, but I'm far west as you can go uh, in Kentucky as possible. It's a good thing I wasn't a navigator growing up. We would have never got where we were supposed to go. Um, as far as length of time, I started this job in January. So if you're Region 1, I apologize for all the mistakes in advance. But the good thing is uh, the WISE Council, the other groups of RPM are pitching in to make sure I don't completely destroy the region before they get me off probation. 
Um, the, I guess the most exciting thing that's happened so far is just meeting all the coordinators and hearing the, you know, a little bit about each individual person. Um, after we get out of this virtual world and you go back to having your regional meetings, you'll get to kind of hang out with everybody in your region and get to know them. And um, you never have enough time to meet everybody, but uh, I've had the privilege of getting to know everybody that's been in my region since I've been here. So, um, hi. <laughs> that's awesome. Now you actually turned your camera off so nobody gets to see how you are in fact the best dressed here today. You have to turn your camera on. Well, I was just uh, following your instructions because I have all the bandwidth problems. So I was going to go uh, off and then cut back on. So. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, <laughs> well, you all see him down in the corner of your screens. Um, and I have one quick note um, for Eric, Michaela, Rebecca. Uh, I understand you all three are sharing a computer. Uh, if two of you want to drop off and then just the three of you just be on one account, that's probably going to make it easier when we go to breakout groups and things like that uh, to keep you all three together. Um, so, yep. That, that, that'd that be fine. I'm not exactly sure how you guys are pulling that off, but good job. Um, and so uh, that's great. Um, and I apologize that that ran over. Um, and I know all of us that are scheduled people were looking at the schedule, um, but I am so glad that you all got to introduce yourselves. And um, like we said, we're really hoping for you all to feel like a class as you move forward. Um, so welcome everybody. We are so glad that you're here. Did we miss anyone? Let me back up because we did have some people joining in and names were changing, so I could have missed somebody else. All right. All right, then. So without further ado, I would like to turn things over to Melissa Goins, and, uh, and she's going to take us through this next portion. So I would like to say that I can talk really fast, um, and I'm sure that um, Greg is taking a look over the schedule right now, and he's going to let you know when I'm finished how things might be moved around a little bit because we want to make sure you get a break really, really soon. Um, but I don't have a ton of things to share. It's just some really foundational stuff that we think is super important. Um, and so I just, I just want to say that you know, when we go through our history um, and have really it's, it's more like how we got here, because we think it's important for every coordinator to be able to understand that and know that because um, advocacy is such an important part of what we do. And when we advocate for the first program and we explain to people what it is that we do and the impact that we're making, a, a lot of us um, aren't people that naturally brag on ourselves or our work. We just kind of go, you know, we like to do the work and then, you know, um, if it's good work, then people will notice and then um, they'll, they'll um, reward us for that. Uh, but that is not always the case. Sometimes it's hard for people to know exactly what we do. So um, I only share that to say that we do bring it up a lot. How are you sharing what you're doing? And the reason that we do is because of how we got here. Um, and when you're advocating for your work, it is not for you. Right. It is for that incarcerated parent that gets to actually talk to their kid and, and that kid who actually gets to connect with their parent. It's for that parent that we expunged their record and now they're working and supporting their family. Right. You all gave a lot of like micro examples about exciting things that happened. And some of you who would have thought, you know, that the most exciting thing for most of you would be seeing kids in school. Right. But that's where we are. Um, so a lot of you gave some macro examples, but some of you really honed in and said this one thing, this one thing was super exciting for me. So when we say you need to let our legislators know what we do, those are the reasons. Picture those faces and then maybe it'll you're you know, it'll be easy for you to share. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. I have like not very many slides at all, I promise, because I, I get Zoom fatigue. Okay, can you all see my screen? What do you see? Yes, we can. You see? Okay, all right, awesome. So let me go here. Okay. And I'm actually going to gonna skip a couple of these things. So, um, so we basically see what we do in three buckets. Um, so that's our mission. Um, and we see what we do is developing and sustaining partnerships in the areas of early learning and transition to school. So we're the only place in K-12 education that actually has that zero to three piece, zero to five. If you have preschool, then you kind of have that three to five um, piece uh, somewhat, but we have that zero to three piece actually, specifically family resource centers do. And we do a lot of amazing things around that. Um, but we have that early piece. Um, the, big, the big chunk of what you do, um, academic achievement and well-being while they're in school, that's the majority of the time, because that's 
That's just, you know, that's K through 12, right? Um, but then sex, successful transition into adult life and beyond. We certainly have students that come back to us after they have transitioned out of school who need help. Um, we have some funny stories, some very touching stories from those, some stories of, you know, parents that you've developed relationships with, um, that come back when they have that zero to three age kid that need our assistance as well. Um, and so this is our vision that we will sustain the national standard of excellence. Um, we used to say on there that we will become the national standard of excellence, but we kind of think we're there. Um, we're part of the national um, network of family support, um, the national family support network, and we are the envy of the country. No other state has a coordinated statewide effort for family resource and youth services centers like we do that is that is school based. Um, California might have more, but they're not school based and they're all kind of chunked and supported in different ways and they get grants and they're there and then they go away when the funding goes away. And so we're 100 percent state funded and, and our partners across the country cannot believe it. They want to know how we did it. They want to know how we sustained it. Um, how did we do 30 years of our state keeping giving us money for this program? And it is absolutely because of the work that you do and then the work that you share that you do. So um, that's our vision. So here is a pop quiz. Um, and we do have a prize for the winner. So um, what was the number one song on Billboard's Hot 100 of 1990? Drop it in the chat. First person to drop the right answer in the chat will win. And Greg is going to manage the chat or, or Melissa because um, I'm sharing my screen. You can't see it. So I'm going to give you 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the answer is B. Does anybody want to sing it right now? The whole song. You have to start from the beginning. Okay. So it is Hold On by Wilson Phillips. So that is when... Um, we uh, Family Resource and Youth Services Center started, and it was in um, response to the Kentucky Education Reform Act. It was actually in response to CARA. It was in response to this court case in 1989. Um, in 1989, there were some... Um, some superintendents in certain parts of the state um, that got together and said, this doesn't look so fair. Um, schools are kind of getting um, funded um, differently and uh, we can't, you know, do for our students what some places, you know, geography was really important um, the, around the resources that you had as a student in Kentucky. And that's really not the way we want to be, right? We want to make sure that students, no matter where you are, have um, as equal opportunity as possible. And so they sued, they won, and our education system was declared unconstitutional and um, the Kentucky Education Reform Act was born. Family Resource Center was one um, of the things um, that happened in CARA. There's also several other things, site-based council decision makings, and a lot of these things have been tweaked or um, changed or taken out altogether since then. But Family Resource and Youth Services Centers is the one thing that has remained largely intact um, and unchanged since 1990, 1989, around that time. We tweaked a little, a few words on our components, but for the most part, um, the, the philosophical um, basis for our centers in 1990 is still the same as it is today. All right, I'm flying through some of this stuff. Um, so our family resource centers um, were based off a model from um, Yale professor Edward Ziegler, and then our youth service centers were based on the model from New Jersey Department of Families and Children. Um, we found some of the two best models in the country at the time um, and based our work off of their work. So if you ever have to answer that question in trivia, now you know where they came from. And so the three underlying themes, we really wanted and needed increased parental involvement. We want to see parents as partners um, in education and a new family resource was a good place. And I go back to the beginning of the pandemic and when everybody was home, a lot of schools were relying heavily on their frisks. It was a natural place to have that school home community connection because we're used to that. Um, and so we were relied on quite a bit early on. Um, service brokerage for students and families, um, which is what you guys have already mentioned, a ton of examples um, where you have um, brokered services for families and then broader community development as well. So the future of Frisk remain viable only as we all remain committed to our mission and vision. Um, you know, I think that's with any job, you need to know what your scope is and what's outside of your scope um, and what you're here to do, what our mission is and our plan is um, and, and what's in things like your program plan and what's outside of that and what's someone else's role. Um, that's just super important because we want to make sure that we spend our energy on um, the scope of 
the FRISC program, um, that we all communicate. I've said this about four times. We all communicate with stakeholders the efficacy of the program as a whole, um, both at that micro level. Let me tell you about this one situation. And on the macro level, let me tell you how we've seen things of our in our school shift slowly over time due to the work of the center. Um, we all see the big picture of our program and how we fit into it because education is always changing, 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 changing. And so um, understanding that bigger picture, and I go back to uh, so many of you are classroom teachers and you have that perspective and that is so helpful. Um, some, I don't, I think less of you came from the background of kind of social work and community. There were, there were a few, um, but you're going to bring different perspectives, but understanding um, how um, things in child welfare are changing is important and how things in education is changing is important. Understanding how things at your community mental health center is important. Um, in 2014, um, we, expanded Medicaid in our state. You understanding that and how we as Frisk fit into that is important. You don't have to know everything, right? But you do have to know a little bit about those things because they do impact our families. I'll give you another example, the pandemic EBT benefits. That If you've been around um, for a few, for several months, then you know um, about PEBT, right? How families got um, enhanced benefits for SNAP. And a lot of people were looking to us for answers that we didn't have. Um, so I think number one, that speaks to um, uh, a confidence in the frisk that we know about things like that. Um, and also um, we were able to go back to DCBS and say, hey, if you, if you need us to share this information, then we need to have updated information. And so um, Lisa Gay um, jumped on it and she has been great in communicating with our frisks, what is coming next. So we should know, you know, right now, I think the, the new rollout of that is rolling out and you should have some basic information in case parents come to you. So perfect example. That has nothing to do, the Kentucky Department of Education may not know those pieces, right? But, but we do. Um, and then we all commit ourselves to quality. Um, I will say that, um, I'm trying to um, share my screen here. I will say that wherever I go, um, I can't, I can't unshare it and you will do great things. That that's true. Um, but sorry, I was trying to get my face on the screen. Um, everywhere that I go and I talk about um, family resource and youth services centers, I don't have to say a ton about the work that you do because for the most part, people know what Frisk um, is because of things that you do every day. So if you keep doing your work every day and you tell your administrators what you're doing, share it with your school board or your site-based council when you can, those things trickle up and trickle out. So um, just keep doing that. I know that it's hard to brag on yourself, but it's important that we do that. So anybody have any questions for me? I said that as fast as I could. Any, R and some. <laughs> any RPMs want to add anything that I left out? Nope. Okay. All right. I'm good and I'm done. And I'll be back tomorrow afternoon. So I'll see y'all then. Melissa, thank you so much. All right, everyone. Um, so, um, so what we've done, uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, I've got a quick tweak to the schedule. Okay, so this is a slight modification from the schedule that we sent out. Um, did I share the right screen? Can you see the schedule? Okay, good. Um, all right, so um, so thank you for that. Um, thank you, Melissa. Um, what we are gonna do now is we're gonna take a uh, 15 minute break. Um, so go ahead and fill up your coffee and let your dogs out and all of those things. Uh, we're gonna meet back here at 1025. Uh, and again, I apologize for those of you on the Western side of the States, uh, all times are Eastern. So just subtract one from all the times. Um, I tried to put central times in as well, um, but we'll meet back here at 1025 um, for a brand new session um, for um, new coordinate orientation on building relationships. Uh, and you notice it is part one. This is a session that we will be following up on with you all in the fall. So um, I'm gonna pause for just one more second. If you do have any questions, please go ahead and put them in the break. But if not, we'll see you back here in 15 minutes. <laughs>